Open your Bibles to the book of Psalms, would you? The 23rd Psalm. And watch this now. You're going to talk about sequence. I'm going to invite you to stand as I sit down, all right? <laughs> if you can, how dare I ever be offended by somebody not standing while I'm sitting, huh? Thank God for the Bible. Amen. God's holy word. From cover to cover, it's still the bestseller. Amen. The B-I-B-L-E-S, that's the book for me. I stand alone on the word of God. The B-I-B-L-E. You can't get two men to agree on much of anything. God took 40 different ones over a 1,600 period of time and produced a manuscript. Inspired, infallible, and inerrant. Find me a book that's perfect, preserved, potent, powerful, precious, piercing, penetrating, profitable, perfecting, and precious all at the same time. It's the Bible, amen? What you do with the Bible will determine what God does with you. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart I've sought thee, O let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. David said this, I've esteemed thy precepts to become right concerning all things, and I hate every false way. If that's too much old English for you, let me break it down. David said, I have come to find out that God is right about everything all the time, and I hate everything else. Amen? God is not changing. His word is not changing. It is still quick and powerful and sharp and then any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing of some of the soul and spirit and joints and marrow, and it's a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Let me help you again. If you don't understand what that means, the Bible gets all up in your business. Every once in a while, somebody says, I don't know if the Bible is true. I don't know who wrote the Bible. I don't know if King James wrote the Bible. I don't know if men wrote the Bible. I don't know if the Bible was made up. I don't know if the white man wrote the Bible. I don't believe the Bible is the word of God. And we sit down and we talk about the textus receptus and the, 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 the original documents and the manuscripts and textual criticism and all that was done and making sure that everything was passed on rightly and, and how they looked at the words and how they threw out anything that was absurd and how the things in the Apocrypha are wild and they don't make sense and they're not substantiated. And those were wonderful arguments, but we don't have time to make all those arguments with everybody. We got too much to do. So sometimes I just say, I ain't going to talk about all that stuff. Start at Genesis 1, read all the way to Revelation 22, and somewhere in between Genesis and Revelation, that book going to get all up in your business. It's going to tell you things. You're going to think there's a bug on your phone, there's a camera in your house, your wife got a big mouth, and ain't none of that. It's just this book will read you. And I'm glad for it. Because we men don't like to tell our business. And that's okay as the Bible reads our business. Aren't you glad tonight we have a Bible? God's holy word. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Come on, read it with me. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup my God. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Let the church say amen. Our Father, one more time, we ask you for unction to function. I praise your vessel tonight. You cleanse me of sin, empty me of self, and fill me with your spirit. I can't help anybody in here, but I know a God who can. Uh -huh. We did not travel miles, pay to put gas in the car, take off of work, People did not sacrifice their own vacation time to be here. Some of these folks who live right here did not work all day long and skip dinner to come to this service. People did not park and get on a golf cart. People did not book a hotel room. Families did not open their homes to host another person. People did not labor to cook meals. These exhibitors did not make the sacrifice to come to showcase what God is doing through their ministries. 
these that are interpreting for the deaf are not moving their hands to make sure that these that cannot hear can understand the word of God. Their own. Nobody came here tonight to hear a sermon from a briefcase. We need a word from the Lord. Yeah. So help us. I know that you don't need me, but I know I need you. So do what you do. Now down the road, across the way, about six hours or so, at the place I call home, would you watch over my wife uh -huh. and my family while I'm gone? Would you take me back to them just as safe and sound as they were when I left them today? Now in between now and then, blow on through here. Yeah. That we might leave here different than how we came. And for all that you do, we'll give you all the praise and honor and glory for it. You're the only one that can handle it and certainly the only one that deserves it. These things we ask and pray in the mighty name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, and your Son. Amen, amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing. There are more than 500 references to sheep in the Bible. Sheep represented cheap wealth and livelihood of people providing food to eat, milk to drink, wool to make cloth, and covering of tents. Sheep were used as a medium of exchange and a source of sacrifice. They were valuable economically, valuable practically, certainly valuable to mankind. But as valuable as these animals were and are and as useful as they have been for us, they by nature are gentle, submissive, and gullible. I said they're gullible. Sheep are just about the easiest animals to lead into something where they don't belong. Isaiah said he was oppressed and afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, a sheep before the shearers is dumb, so he openeth not his mouth. I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter, Jeremiah says, and I know not that they had devised devices against me. Jeremiah said, I'm like a sheep. They're about to kill me, and I don't even know better. They're defenseless. Micah says the remnant of Jacob shall be among the Gentiles in the midst of a people as a lion among the beasts of the forest, as a young lion of the flocks of the sheep, who if he go through, both tread it down and tear it in pieces, and, and none can deliver. Matthew says, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Sheep are in constant need of guidance and care. Number says, They go out before them, they go in before them, and they may lead them out, which may bring them in, that the congregation of the Lord be not as sheep which have no shepherd. Jesus said they were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. Isaiah said, we're like sheep that have gone astray. We've turned everyone to our own way. The Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Watch this now. They're not intelligent. The songwriter said they're, they're prone to wonder. I wish somebody listened to me tonight. These sheep are valuable. You can get tent covering out of them. You can exchange them as a medium. Listen, you, you can use them with milk to drink. You can use them for wool. You can use them to provide something to eat, but you've got to understand as useful as they are by nature, you can lead them astray because they're gullible. By nature, they're defenseless. They don't fight for themselves by nature. They are in constant need of guidance and care. They don't figure out where to go unless somebody shows them. I'm just trying to tell you, as valuable as sheep are, them sheep need a shepherd. Yes, sir. Now, nobody knew that more than a shepherd did. As David stood there watching over his sheep every day, he was, he was so familiar with with how needy these animals were. <laughs> His brother teased him when he came to the Valley of Eli. Who, who's back there with your little sheep? He, he talked about how important it was to take care of them when he said to Saul, let me fight this giant. And Saul didn't think he was able, but, but you don't understand something. I'm a shepherd. I know a little bit about fighting because when somebody messes with my sheep, they messing with me. And I ran off a line and I shut down a bear.
I handled them. I'll handle that melon head giant the same way I. Uh, he's yeah. just trying to say, Saul, you got to understand something. I may be a little boy to you, but I'm a little boy that's a shepherd, and them sheep are not going to get taken advantage of because I'm a shepherd and I look out for my sheep because them sheep need me and they have me. Now, David said, I know sheep need a shepherd because I'm a shepherd that watches over sheep. But watch this now. I also know that I'm a sheep that needs a shepherd. Because as dumb as they are, dumb I am. Come on now. Because as unintelligent as they are, I'm unintelligent. Because as in need of guidance as they are, I'm in need of guidance. As gullible as they are, I'm gullible. David knows what it is for them sheep to wander off. But David also knew as a man what it is to stay at home one day when he should have gone to war. And there's a woman bathing and he looked, he got hooked, he booked, he took, and he became a crook all in one day. <laughs> And all of a sudden, he spends nine months with somebody that doesn't belong to him. He falls into sin. He's a man after God's own heart. He's the sweet psalmist of Israel. He's already defeated Goliath. He plays an instrument, and the evil spirit flees from Saul. And yet, in one day, he stays from war. And that same man that cuts off the head of Goliath is the same man sleeping with another man's wife. David must realize when he writes, writes Psalm 23, as much as them sheep need me, I also need a shepherd. So as this shepherd talking about his sheep started being the sheep talking about his shepherd how exciting it must have been when he picked up his pen on the inspiration of the Holy Ghost of God and said just like they need somebody and they got me I need somebody and I got Jesus <laughs> what it must have been like for David to pick up his pen and say I'm unintelligent I'm defenseless I need guidance I need care I need help I need direction I'm prone to wonder I mess up I need somebody fighting for me because I can't fight for myself and who better to have then not my mama, not my daddy, not my preacher, not my friend, not my homie, not my dog, not my best. Listen, not my president, not my canon, and not the one I voted for. The one that is my shepherd is the one who put the stars in space and the moon in place. The one who put the sun hanging on nothing and it never falls down. The one who took from the dust of the ground, formed man and breathed in the man's nostrils the breath of life. The omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent, immutable, eternal, always was, always is, and always will be. Oh, what it must have felt like to David to pick up his pen and say, the Lord is my shepherd. And I want to tell us in these last days in 2023, we better take our halos off a little bit tonight and admit we are unintelligent. We are defenseless. We better take our halos out tonight and realize we're in constant need of care. I don't care how many degrees we have, how many years we've been in ministry, how many churches we've planted, how many Bibles we've signed, how many people tune into our services, how many cities we've visited, how many mentors, how many ministers we've counseled. I'm here to tell you, no matter how long we live, we need a shepherd. And I got on 64 today to tell you, not only do we need one, we got one. <laughs> The psalmist said, I've been lied on, cheated, talked about, mistreated, buke that scorn, run down, sure as you're born. I've been up, down, almost to the ground, but as long as I got King Jesus, I don't need nobody else. The Lord is my shepherd. I said the Lord is my shepherd. Is this on? Can you hear me? Can, are you having... You know, it's amazing. I spent my whole life breaking sound systems because I was too loud. Now they're trying to get me up where I can be heard. <laughs> oh, how life changes. You know, I'm learning over the last three years. It never was me with the power anyway. It's always been the word of God. Listen to me tonight. The Lord is my shepherd. What does that mean for a shepherd who watched sheep? What does it mean for a sheep who knew he needed a shepherd? What does it mean for a pastor tonight, for a husband tonight, for a wife, for a young person, for a 16-year-old trying to meander his way through school when three out of four seniors graduate without their virginity? 20% of 15-year-olds have sex by the time they turn 15. What does it mean for a single adult who's trying to find his life mate or her life's mate in this crazy world? I've said to our church, I'm glad I ain't looking for a wife right now. I ain't trying to get y'all depressed, but let me, it's slim pickings right now. Let me tell you something. If I were looking for a wife in 2023, I'd make sure I had a good shepherd now. 
What does that mean tonight? I believe, first of all, it means complete satisfaction. Notice verse number one. He said, I shall not want. Watch this now. He said, when you got a shepherd, listen to me, you got all you need. It's complete satisfaction. The inherent sensitivity of the shepherd, he knows what we need. The infinite source that the shepherd is, he not only knows what we need, but he is the place from which we receive it. Aren't you glad that what you need tonight, the shepherd has? Aren't you glad that what you need tonight, the shepherd Shepherd knows. Aren't you glad that where you are, the shepherd has located you? Aren't you glad when you get off the radar, off the beating path, no Wi-Fi, no sales service, can't nobody find you? Aren't you glad that the shepherd knows where you are? Complete satisfaction. Notice, secondly, controlled supply. Look at verse number two. He maketh me. Say that with me. He maketh me. Say it again. He maketh me. Uh, look at the second part of the verse. He leadeth me. Say it with me. He leadeth me. Somebody say amen that the shepherd's in control. Now, now, now listen, I know we get stubborn sometimes, but listen to me now. We need to thank God that there's just sometimes he makes us and sometimes he leads us. He maketh me. Notice the divine placement of the Lord. He maketh me lie down. Maketh me lie down. Where? In green pastures. Watch this now. He has a purposeful downtime for me. Come on now, preachers. Sometimes we need to learn how to lie down. We want to stay on the move. We want to be active. We want to get things done. We want to say yes to everything. We want to be Superman in the phone booth. But sometimes the shepherd said, you don't need to save nobody. You need to lie down. This is what meetings like this are like. He, need to lie. he knows when we need to lie down. He knows when we need a break. He knows when we need to stop and pause. He knows when we need to wait. He gives us a purposeful downtime. He gives us a proper diet. He's making me to lie down, watch this now, in green pastures. Somebody say amen that the shepherd knows to stop us in a place where there's food to eat. Amen. <laughs> Thank God for the green pastures. Thank God that no matter how much they run low in America on, on, on resources, that there's always green pastures in the word of God. I went to the grocery store last year. I told the man in the meat department, you got to understand something, my brother. I said, I used to come here. They had 12 chicken wings in the pack, and it's about $5. Today, I came in here. They got 10 chicken wings in the pack, and it's, and it's $7. Now, listen. He said, I said, not only did you, you take chicken wings out, you made the price go up. I don't understand that. If you get fewer wings, you ought to pay less money. Can I get a witness? He said we have a shortage on chicken wings. Let me tell you something. I'm glad that the shepherd doesn't have a shortage on green pastures. Divine placement. Notice the directed pleasure. He leadeth me beside the still waters, not the rapid waters, not the raging waters, not the rampaging waters, but the still waters. He takes me somewhere where there's peace, where I can relinquish my will, where I have a refreshing wonder, a reviving wealth, a rejuvenating work. Has anybody ever been so dry, so weary, so down and in despair, and just in the nick of time, the shepherd took you past the still waters? Complete satisfaction, controlled supply. Note number three, contributed strength. Look at verse number three. He restored my soul. It means to bring back to existence or used to. To bring back to its original condition. Aren't you glad that the shepherd knows how to restore? <laughs> Come on now. Come on. Say amen if you've ever been restored. <laughs> I'm glad in 2023, not all the marriages are breaking up. Some of them getting put back together. Not all the kids are running away. Some of them coming back home. Not all of the churches are shutting down. Some of them are getting started. Not all of the people are quitting on God. Some of them are surrendering to preach. I'll tell you why. Because the shepherd knows how to put a broken bone back in place. The shepherd knows how to put a broken heart back in place. The shepherd knows how to mend those broken pieces. The shepherd knows how to bring it back to life. I'll never forget. I'll never forget when, when I watched my brother go through his heart stopping. And I'll never forget when they said, we're going to cardiovert you. We're going to shock your heart because it's off rhythm and it needs to get back on the right rhythm so you can enjoy life the way it's supposed to be. They put a shock on that heart. Next thing you know, it was beating like it was supposed. Let me tell you something. That cardioversion doesn't work on everybody, but aren't you glad when you get out of whack and you get out of kilter and you get in places where you shouldn't be, aren't you glad the shepherd knows how to shock that heart and get it back in rhythm again? Maybe God brought you to Jubilee this 
this week, not just to get away from home, not just to get a pepperoni roll, but maybe God brought you to Jubilee because your heart ain't beating like it should for souls. It's not beating like it should for prayer. It's not beating like it should for worship. Maybe you're preaching to everybody, but you ain't preaching to yourself. Maybe by the time you get back on whatever highway you came up on, maybe your heart will be beating like it's supposed to be back to its original form. I'm just saying the shepherd knows how to restore. Look at verse number three. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. His, his complete satisfaction, his control supply, his contributed strength. Look at me now. His capable supervision. Yes, sir. Watch this now. I just want to tell you, he knows where he's going. <laughs> don't, you hate, don't you hate when you pull out a parking lot and the person get out in front don't know where they're going? Y'all follow me. You get up to the first light. He got a right blinker on, a left blinker on, the light turned green. He's still sitting there. The first thing you're thinking is not why are you lost. You're thinking, why did you get in front? <laughs> I don't expect you to know where you're going all the time. Just don't get in front. Now, watch this now. I'm glad I've never looked at the shepherd and he went, which way should I go? Should I go right? Should I go left? Should I stop? Should I slow down? Is this the right turn? Do we go north or south, east or west? I lost my GPS signal. He don't need a GPS signal. He is the GPS signal. I'm glad that he leadeth me. Watch this now. He leads me on a righteous path. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Here's what David's saying. When I follow him, I do right. When I'm in line behind him, I do right. Watch this now. Husbands treat their wife when they follow the shepherd. They treat her right. The wives submit to their husbands when they follow the shepherd. They do right. Children obey their parents when they follow the shepherd. They do right. Church members do right. Hey, they tithe 52 weeks out of year. 52 weeks. That's all of them, by the way. They do that when they're following the shepherd. I tell our people, don't get nervous when I start talking about tithing. I hadn't started talking about your money yet. The tithe is the Lord's. Amen. When you follow the shepherd, you're in a righteous path. Everybody's trying to do right. But here's the problem. We're following preachers. We're following televangelists. We're following people that we look up to. We're following people that signed our Bible. Ain't nothing bad about looking up to people, but I'm just saying a man is a man and he's going to mess up. But when you get in line behind the shepherd, guess what? Synonymous with following the shepherd is the paths of righteousness. A righteous path, watch this now, for a rightful purpose. For his name's sake. He don't lead me in the paths of righteousness so I sign Bibles. He didn't leave me in the path of righteousness so I get social media friends. He didn't leave me in the path of righteousness so I book more meetings. He didn't leave me in the path of righteousness so that people look up to me more. He didn't leave me in the path of righteousness so I can send out a tweet. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. See, doing right is not supposed to make us look good. It's most supposed to make the shepherd look good. See, because the only reason I did right because I was following the shepherd. So when I'm taking pictures after I did right, I'm giving people the impression that I actually knew what I was doing. What I should be saying is don't take my picture. I ain't know where I was going. I just got in line behind the shepherd. Hmm. Number five, he's a calming solace. Yea, though. Yea, though. He leads me in the path of righteousness. Watch yourself. When I'm following the shepherd, I'm in the right path. However, yea, though. But when I end up in the valley. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, just be honest. Everybody be honest. Don't you wish you never had to go through the valley? The valley is a shadow of death. I said to my wife, honey. Have you been thinking about the fact that I might die? She said, yeah. I said, well, let's not talk about that too long. So we didn't. So instead of talking about dying, she turned her TV on mute. I turned my volume up, and we sat in the room every night. She was at home. I was in the room, and we watched Family Feud. <laughs> That's better than talking about dying, all right? I think a lot of people died because they were alone. I wonder if we could have gowned up a wife or a husband in some of them rooms if somebody might not have had some hope. See, I don't, listen, 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 listen. I don't care who you are. When you get lonely and you lose hope, you're on the brink of death. 
But I'd like to tell you, David said, you're never alone. Somebody say amen that you're never alone. He said, when the fretful plight comes, I have a fearless persuasion. I will not fear. He didn't say I won't fear because I'm carrying a gun. He didn't say I won't fear because I'm an independent Baptist. He didn't say I won't fear because I got a six pack. He didn't say I won't fear because I'm a grown man. He didn't say I won't fear because I've been saved for a long time. He said, I will not fear for thou art with me. And somebody ought to say amen because even when you're in the darkest hour, in the midnight hour down in the valley where some of your best friends are too cute and too clean to go. The shepherd said, I'll go right there with you. You ever had some friends say, I'll be with you, ride or die, and then you started dying, and they said, bye-bye. <laughs> you don't find out who your friends are, go through a valley. Let something happen in your life that doesn't go well, and all of a sudden, people who were calling you every week somehow misplace your number. I don't know what happened. I just didn't have your number. Stop lying. You know what? Some people don't want to associate with people in the valley. They're too worried they might get stuck down there. I'm glad the shepherd says, I'm with you in the valley. Somebody came to Jubilee in the valley tonight. He's with you. He's with you. He's with you. Number six, he gives me comforting security. Watch this now. Thy rod and thy staff, they come. The rod was a more solid, firm stick. It was used for a couple of purposes. First of all, for credible protection. See, because the wolf, the lion, the bear would come after the sheep, but the shepherd had something in his hand that could handle them. Come on now, aren't you glad when that old lion come messing with you that the shepherd got a rod? Somebody say amen. I said somebody say amen. Hey, listen to me. You can sit in here tonight and say, oh, I'm here tonight because I, I, I have good leadership things, philosophies in my church, and, and I've learned a lot of things in life that'll keep me out of trouble. Yeah, that sounds real good. You know why you're here tonight? Because there were a whole bunch of time the lion was going to bite your head off and the shepherd knocked him upside the head with a rod. Somebody thank God that Jesus is our defender. The other way the shepherd would use his rod was to count the sheep by head. Put his rod on the head of the sheep. You know what that meant? He wanted to make sure he never lost one. Come on now. Somebody thank God you still saved because the shepherd never lost one. I given to them eternal life. They shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. You say, preacher, how you know you can't lose your salvation? Because I still got mine. And if it was losable, I would have lost it by now. And I feel like I'm in good company. So would you. Yes, sir. Credible. The staff was more slender with a hook on it. The rod was used for credible protection for, for a counting process, the rod. But the staff was used for more of a connecting pull. See, the, the, the staff had a hook on it. See, see, there were times when that sheep with his gullible, unintelligent, unintelligent, wandering self found himself in ditches and danger where he didn't belong. The shepherd didn't reach down and jerk him out of the ditch. He took that staff and took that hook and, and just delicately pulled him out. Hey, hey, come on now. Come on now. Just, just be honest and shame the devil tonight. You done been in some places you shouldn't have been. I've made some decisions I shouldn't make. All of us with our old fancy degrees and our old experience, we've, we've gone some places ministering and went, how in the world did I do? Aren't you glad when we were just about to lose everything? The shepherd took that staff and said, get on back over here, shit. He knows how to pull us in, doesn't he? Notice his convenience spread. Thou prepare us a table. <laughs> Watch this now. Aren't you glad the shepherd knows how to cook? I don't know about you, but when we have Thanksgiving at our house, we have a spread. Now, I'm just trying to tell y'all, you, had, had, you ain't never had Thanksgiving till you have it at a black person's house. <laughs> I'm just telling you, we, we put some stuff on our table that will bless you or kill you. <laughs> I, I felt for you tonight as you had to read all of those names of all those grandchildren. But part of me was like, that ain't nothing 
like the names I got to read every week of the visitors that come to my church. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> don't worry about phonetics because we don't use phonetics, all right? <laughs> but when it comes to them spreads, let me tell you something. Some of you thought, some of you think, oh, you ain't had Thanksgiving at my house. Listen to me. None of us can compare to the shepherd spread. <laughs> Thou preparest. Here's the spread of the shepherd. It's a sovereignly prepared spread. It's a spread that's not only a sovereign preparation, but it's a spread with a splendid provision. See, when I go shopping, I got a budget. I'd like to buy the whole store. The problem is I can't pay for it. But I'm glad the shepherd doesn't work on a budget. Amen. <laughs> sovereign preparation, splendid provision. Now watch the seeing people in the presence of my enemy. Unfortunately, it's at our lowest moments sometimes that we deal with our biggest enemy. There they come surrounded by us with a left-handed fork and right-handed knife, just ready to pounce on us and eat us. Some of you came to Jubilee just complaining about all the people that are getting on your nerve. Has anybody ever got on your last nerve and then they found five more you didn't even know you had? <laughs> my mom and dad said they wake up every morning and have a competition over who has more muscles hurting. My mom said, I found out I had a muscle there when it started hurting. <laughs> Some of you have come to Jubilee under attack. Some of you are under attack by your own blood family members. Some of you are under attack by another preacher. Some of you are under attack by lost people who think your Christianity is a joke. Some of you are standing for righteousness and being mocked for it. And people are ready to eat you. And your prayer is, God, get them out of my life. And God is going, nope. I'm not going to get them out of your life. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give them a front row seat in your life. And instead of asking me to remove, remove them, feed them popcorn. Because while they're sitting there, they're going to watch me feed you. He said, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Stop complaining about your haters. God, let them stand there so they can watch just how good your shepherd is. I don't know why all these people in my neighborhood that don't like our church here. And I don't know why all these people on my job keep mocking my Christianity. Let them mock your Christianity. And when the shepherd comes up at lunchtime and they're eating sardines and saltines and you eating steak and baked potato, they're going to say, mmm, you got a good shepherd. Yeah. No, this is covering sufficiency. Thou anointest my head with oil. The oil is a picture of the Holy Ghost. Come on now. Yes, sir. The Spirit's filling. Be filled with the Spirit. Thou anointest my head with oil. All that oil was a soothing ointment for that sheep when he needed it. And aren't you glad that what we need in these last days we have, it is the power of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the Spirit's full of filling but the supplied fullness. My cup runneth. Oh, I went to get ice cream where I was preaching last week. And, and, and I don't, I'm not very creative in my, my flavor of ice cream. I, I just get vanilla. <laughs> but, 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 I, but I do get creative in my toppings. <laughs> I'm so bad about it, I call the place first before I go. Because if they don't have all three toppings, I'm not going. I call on the phone and say, I'd like to know if you have hot fudge, peanut butter sauce, and marshmallow sauce. Oh, we have peanut butter sauce, but we don't have marshmallow. Thank you. Have a nice life. <laughs> so I went last week somewhere, and I said, you have hot fudge, peanut butter, marshmallow? They said, we sure do. I said, I'd like a big Sunday vanilla ice cream. I said, I'd like lots of sauce, lots of hot fudge, lots of peanut butter sauce, lots of marshmallow, whipped cream, no nuts, no cherry, biggest size you have. I got me one of them guys hadn't been working there long. He hadn't learned how to save the company money. He kept loading up like he was working out. 
in the gym. He kept putting in ice cream, putting in ice cream. Well, I knew he wasn't going to charge me more. He'd already, he charged me the price before he started scooping. I said, scoop, boy, scoop, scoop. <laughs> I already paid for it. Scoop. Then he started pumping them sauces, pumping them. I mean, just pumping it, pumping it, pumping it. He, he brought me to Sunday. He had sauce all on his hand all over the place, and he ain't going to hand it to me. What am I supposed to do with all of that? He said, here's your Sunday." I said, oh, it looks real good. I said, look, 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 there's a bigger container right over there. Could you grab it and grab it and put it underneath this Sunday? And, 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 and so as the sauce starts falling off, I don't lose none of it. The sauce in this cup falls into the bigger container, and after I'm finished with this one, I can get that container and lick it because this stuff just, hey, let me tell you something. God gets so good. He gets so full. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. Somebody ought to quit complaining tonight and thank God it's not only in the bowl, it's coming out the bowl, into the saucer. After you finish the bowl, pick up the saucer and slurp it down. David said, my cup runs over. Hmm. Let me close with this thought. is consequential surety. See, verse number six is David coming to a close. He says, surely. Come on now, aren't you glad that there are some things in the Christian life that are for sure? Amen. He said, I got a favorable conviction. I, I got a favor. I, there, there's some things I believe that are favorable. I got a favorable conviction. Surely what, David? I got some precious components I'd like to talk about. Here they are, goodness and mercy. Say it with me, goodness and mercy. Say it again, goodness and mercy. I mean, couldn't we practically say grace and mercy? I mean, in grace, God's unmerited favor. In grace, the goodness and the push of God, the breath of God, undeserving. Somebody say amen if God is good tonight. But thank God that where grace is, mercy is right there. With it. Listen to me. Grace is the good stuff we don't deserve, but mercy is not getting the bad stuff we do deserve. Aren't you thankful for goodness and mercy, the precious conveyance? Listen, the precious components, but notice the particular conveyance. He said, they shall follow me. Not just goodness and mercy, but they shall follow me. Right off it is in the Greek. It literally means in Hebrew, it is to chase, to follow, to hunt, or pursue. And David knew what it was to be chased. Chased by Saul, chased by Absalom, chased, chased by the Philistines, chased by the, 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 the servants of his predecessor. Everywhere he looked, there was a bounty on his head. There were people trying to run him down. He, he had to sleep in the woods even though the throne was supposed to be his. He said, they're running me down. But in Psalm 23, he didn't look behind him and see Saul. He didn't see Absalom. He didn't see Philistine. He said, I look in the rear view mirror and guess who's chasing me now? Goodness and mercy. Good gracious alive. There have been some times I've been preaching in some cities. My wife couldn't find me. If they killed me, I would have died and been the subject of unsolved mysteries. I mean, there have been some places. I'm, I'm just telling you. Been some, I told my wife, I said, I could die out here. They wouldn't find out for 100 years. But I'm glad that when she can't find me, when I'm not on the map and my phone doesn't work, somehow I get a knock on the door in the midnight hour and say, we found you. How'd you find me? We got a GPS system. We can find you anywhere. What's your name? Goodness and mercy. <laughs> Precious components, particular conveyance, their prolonged continuance shall follow me all the days of my life. He said, I got a favorable conviction. Watch this now and I'm done. Therefore, I have fervent commitment. Fervent commitment. Watch this now. Because of how good my shepherd is to me. Let me tell you how good I'm going to be to him. I will dwell. In the house of the Lord. Watch, watch, watch this. Watch, watch, watch. He's so good. Watch this now. I ain't going nowhere. He's so good. I ain't quitting on him. He's so good. I ain't checking out. He's so good. Me and my red wagon ain't going. Watch this now. The next time you about ready to quit on God, just be thankful your shepherd has never quit on you. 
he said, the Lord, I've got a serving place and I've got a sustained position. I'll dwell in the house of the Lord how long forever. Let's get some Jubilee members here tonight that will leave this Jubilee say, we got too good of a shepherd to quit church, quit reading our Bible, quit giving, quit being soul winners, quit fighting the devil, quit living for God, quit, quit working together, together because the Lord, by the way, the Lord means Jehovah is my shepherd. Watch this now. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want Jehovah Jireh he's my provider he making me to lie down in green pastures he leads me beside the still waters Jehovah Shalom he is my peace he restoreth my soul Jehovah Rapha he is my healer he leadeth me in the paths of righteousness Jehovah said Cain the Lord who is our righteousness yea though I walked in the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil for thou art with me Jehovah Shammah the Lord who is present thou preparest the table before me thou anointest my head with oil Jehovah Nisse he is my banner my cup runneth over Jehovah Makadi he is my sanctifier. You are not shepherded by the president, Democratic, Republican, or independent. You're not shepherded ultimately by your pastor, your mama, your daddy, or a cow that used to be your grandma. You are shepherded by Jehovah. In these last days, let's start admitting we're not intelligent, we're gullible. Come on, preachers. We're gullible. We're in constant need of guidance and care. It doesn't mean we're not valuable. It doesn't mean we're not important. It just means we happen to be creatures that need a lot of help. And I just like to say on a Monday night in the month of June, as much as I need help, I'm glad I got it. The Lord is my shepherd. Our Father, forgive us for the times we've improvised. We've tried to lean to our own understanding. We've wandered. Forgive us for the times we've messed up and excused it as if we didn't have another option. God, tonight, help us to get in line behind the shepherd. Your heads are bowed and eyes are closed tonight. No one looking around. How many nights say, preacher, oh, I need to be reminded to follow the shepherd. Would you put your hand up all over the building? Oh, God bless you. Why don't we just have a time of invitation tonight? You've heard the preaching from Pastor Jared tonight. God's not done. While she's playing, let's stand together all over the building. As soon as she starts singing tonight, God spoke to your heart. Why don't you leave your seat tonight? Come talk to the shepherd. Come on.